Hey guys, I was inspired by something I saw on Pinterest to try doing a sort of watercolory, semi abstract, three page um, kind of a landscape in my watercolor sketch journal. Um, and I, I, well, in the inspiration photo, I think it was a two page. I happened to be on this three page spread here, part of my journal. So I thought we'd give it a try. So let's do that. Uh, I'm going to work on the background in watercolor and then we're going to let it dry and then we're going to go over it with some black pen, probably a pit pen. Um, I'm going to get my watercolors wet first. And I'm doing it over the paper because I actually am going to want to get the paper wet too. And I'm going to start by getting one of my larger flat brushes and some clean water. And I'm going to actually get the paper wet. All the way across. And of course, as we know from working with watercolor, because the paper is wet, that means the watercolor is going to bleed and run. That's okay, though. That's what, kind of what we want. All right. So now... I think this brush is too small. I have this one, but I think it's too small, so let's get a bigger one. I'm going to use this one, which is a Princeton Neptune number, oop, number eight um, quill brush. I knew it wasn't called a round. <laughs> I just couldn't remember what it was called. I'm going to start with my sky colors, and for that I'm going to use cobalt blue. That's my computer going off in the background, so just ignore it. <laughs> I'm not going to fast forward this because I thought you guys might want to see the process. And I'm okay with these white spots. That just kind of, to me, that hints at clouds. So I'm, I'm, I'm liking that. blue paint a little bit more wet. There we go. This quill brush holds a lot of water so it stays wet a long time. Okay, I like that. So let's um, sort of hint at maybe a mountain range or something in the background. We're going to stick with the quill brush for right now. What color do I want to use? I think I want to use burnt umber. At least to start. Now remember that these colors, oops, see it got green on there. Well, I guess that green's meant to be there. <laughs> uh, remember these colors are going to dry lighter than they look. As is true with watercolor most of the time. I need to put something um, in this end of the paper. Let's see. There we go. So it's just kind of hanging off the table and it's not super flat. I'm going to add in some of this kind of reddish brown color. sepia. I'm going to pull some of this down here. I 
like that a lot. I want to add a little bit of a purplish gray color up here. going to um, lift some of this down here. All right. Then I'm going to get rid of some of the rag marks. And then I'm going to grab some of my green. This is permanent green. some sap green. And some hooker's green. Now I'm going to take my book and I'm going to add water to spots and I'm going to get it to drip. going to do some more lifting. I'm going to switch back to the smaller brush and I'm going to go in with some of my sepia a little bit of the reddish brown to it. Okay. I'm going to take something um, pointy and I'm going to scratch into the wet watercolor paint.
going to go back into one of my greens. And I think I'm going to go to Hooker's Green. And I'm gonna, I have this thing for Prussian blue, so I'm gonna put some Prussian blue in here. It's one of my favorite watercolor colors, Prussian blue. I have less control with the bigger brush, but that's what I want. Paper's getting really, really wet and it's starting to buckle a little bit, but that's okay because after we do this, we're going to just let it dry. Now, of course, you can use a heat tool if you want. I'm going to probably just let it dry naturally because I um, need to go pick up my mail. I have stuff I should be doing <laughs> that I'm not doing because I'm painting. Now, of course, don't forget that, you know, you can lift some of this up if you get too much, but you're never going to get all of it up. So you have to just be okay with whatever happens. Okay, we're going to let that dry and I'll be back. Okay, I lied. I want to add some paint gray. Thank you. 
just seemed like it needed a little pop of something, so. And y'all know I like Payne's gray anyway. <laughs> but yeah, it seemed like it needed something. Now the paper is starting to dry, so I'm adding extra water after I put the paint on in the direction I kind of want the paint to go to try to semi-control where it goes. But you know, this is a watercolor, so you only have so much control, which is not a lot. doing it all the way across the page. You don't want to just add a new color in and just do it only in one spot. That'll look weird. And this is an expressive, impressionistic, in my opinion, like forest landscape. So, you know, this is not about literal painting. It's about suggesting shapes, as always, because I always paint that way. You guys should know that by now. You put the right color in the right place to suggest your shapes instead of painting it literally. It's more fun, and in some ways it's a bigger challenge. That's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, now we're gonna stop. I'm gonna let it dry and we'll be back with a black pen or brown pen, probably black pen. All right, I'll be back. Okay, our watercolor is dry and we're gonna come in here now with a um, black pen um, or brown pen. <laughs> I'm still not sure. I've got some pit pens and my carbon ink pen. Um, I know, I don't think I want the brush tip one, but I don't know that for sure. I am going to get a water brush. Hopefully I have one with actually has water in it. Maybe. Yeah, there we go. Because I think I want to go in there while some of the ink is wet and um, maybe smear a little bit of it. I think I want to do black, but let's see. This is S. I should probably get my reading glasses. This is M. 
What is this one? XS. It's a little tiny one. Um, let me get my reading glasses. Alright. And this part's just about drawing and picking out shapes from what you painted and turning them into something. I'm going to start with the M. I'm going to have my water brush open and in my other hand. And I'm going to look for my tree shapes. Now trees aren't even and they're not straight. Not by any stretch. So if your lines are not even and straight, that's okay. And if you get in here while the ink is wet, you may be able to get it to move a little bit. It's probably less likely with the Faber-Castell pens than some of the other pens, but it will happen. And basically the idea is just to get in here and draw some tree shapes. Don't smear all your ink, just smear some of it. That will just give your tree an interesting texture. Maybe hint at knots in the bark or, or something like that. And I'm just, you know, obviously you can tell I'm being loose and sketchy with it. Just something like that. I may... You know, do something with other shapes here in the kind of the background. Like that. So I'm going to do that all the way across, and this part I am going to fast forward through, and I'll be right back.
right, there you go. That was a lot of fun. I liked that a lot. Might do, might do more of these in this book. So anyway, I hope it gave you some ideas of what you can do to play with your watercolors, have some fun in your journal, um, just be expressive and make some marks and play with your products. And you never know what could happen. Look at this. This is pretty. This is really pretty. I like this. All right. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know. All of my contact information is in the description below. So take a minute out of your day and read it for me. Uh, there is also a link there to my new Facebook group. If you want to join, uh, just click on it. It should take you right over there, and you can request to join. Uh, you can leave a comment on the video. I will get back to you as soon as possible, I promise. And if you have any products or anything you'd like me to review, you'd like to send me happy mail or whatever, my P.O. box is in the description below. That's all I can think of for right now. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And the most important thing, go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later.